Good morning. Good morning. God bless you, beautiful people, and welcome to the online worship service here at God's All Nations Church, where the vision for this ministry is family, love, growth. Family, love, growth. I'm Brother Ryan Shelton. Thank you for joining us this morning. It is an absolute privilege to come before you to uh, come on your TV screens, on your, your cell phones, just to be able to welcome you and, and bless the Lord together. Um, today is a beautiful day, the day the Lord has made. Um, I'm, I'm excited about today. Uh, I'm always excited about Sunday morning, um, and I hope you are too. Uh, to our online audience, thank you. God bless you for always supporting us, always chiming in and being a part of our worship service. Um, there's so much we could talk about these days, but a lot going on in the streets of Chicago. Um, it, it's the devil is busy, y'all. The devil's busy and he is attacking our children. And um, I bring that up because, you know, the pandemic is settling down, I guess I can say, and our children will be going back to in-person schooling at our schools. Um, they have been out over a whole year. So it's going to be a major adjustment. Um, and we want to be praying for our children uh, as they return back to school, praying for uh, the teachers, the, the staff, the principals, um, because the kids have had so much time off away from uh, school structure that it might take a little time to wane them back in. And um, these children, our children are suffering uh, great tragedies, especially here in the city of Chicago, uh, overwhelming tragedies that, um, that affect every household. Uh, so we want to remain, remain prayerful for our children uh, going to and fro. Uh, there used to be a saying, um, oh, they was in the wrong place at the they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. No, we can't say that no more. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're in the right place. The devil will attack. So we want to have our guard up, have our armor of God, our, our armor of God breastplate on us um, and look to him for his protection. Um, when my daughter was in high school, uh, I prayed constantly that the blood of Jesus just cover her. And we need to do the same for our children. Uh, these streets are, um, these streets are absolutely uh, just uh, covered in blood, and we need to be covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. So, parents, I admonish you to um, pray over your children, uh, talk to your children. You know, it's important to set that foundation um, of Christ in our children's lives. And the children are the future. I know that's cliche, but the children are the future. So we want to make sure they're prepared for this world. Um, that's our responsibility as parents. It, it, it really is. Um, and it's not tough. But if you rely on Jesus, excuse me, he can guide you. He can instruct you on what to say, what not to say. And it is absolutely important that we do so. So. Um, I'm praying for the children as they get ready to go back to school in August. Uh, not sure what the date is, but that's something that's been on my heart. If you are from Chicago, if you heard about what's going on in the streets of Chicago, we are dealing with and have been dealing with uh, shooting deaths, shooting victims uh, on an everyday basis. And I believe that we need that outlet of Jesus in order to deal with what we're doing, what we're going through, um, so much traumatic uh, circumstances and, and situations. So we, we don't, we don't want to forget on who we rely on, all right? We don't want to forget that. So, um, again, I'm so glad you joined us. Let's pray for our children. Let's pray for uh, uh, houses of worship. Uh, they are under attack. Um, let's pray for the turmoil going on in South Africa. Um, I don't know if you've been checking it out. Uh, there has been looting, burning of buildings, um, just 
chaos in the streets. Uh, in Cuba, I believe, the same thing going on. Um, we need Christ like never before. We need Christ like never before. So we want to um, continue to pray for the nations. Um, if you haven't noticed, there's a change going on. There's a change going on, and it's our responsibility to get the word out, which is why I'm so privileged to be able to talk to you online, get the word of Christ, talk about the goodness of God, because we don't want to get left behind. That's simple as that. We don't want to get left behind. I don't want none of my family left behind. You know what I'm saying? Down from the babies to the elders. I want them all going to heaven, all right? And so let's do our part. Let's do our part. Let's do our part in worshiping and praying and fasting, uh, interceding for others. You know what I'm saying? Like, we should be spreading the word of God to, to others who are, 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 are lacking or not getting that nourishment, not getting that word, that food. We should take the initiative to reach out to those who might not be getting the word, all right? So it's our responsibility. Bring them into the house. You know what? Let's get out of the house and go see them where they're at. You know what I'm saying? That's what we got to do. And I'm encouraged by that task, by that responsibility that is put on the saints uh, because that's what the word of God says. So we don't want to slack in anything. And as long as we're doing what the word says, our lives will work. Then, yeah, we will face adversity, absolutely. But as long as we are applying that word, it will work. And that's what I love about this church. Um, forget about us being on camera. Forget about the audio team and the praise team. We get sound word in this church. And look, if you don't have a church home, this is an amazing house of worship to be a part of. We, we, we ask you to come and, come and check us out on the west side of Chicago, 44 North Laramie. You know what I'm saying? Come on out, enjoy, uh, worship with us, um, help us build. We're about family love and growth, and family love and growth is, are just so important to, to lives. Um, family is important to me. This ministry was set upon families, and family is the backbone of, 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 of God's will for his people. Um, and pastor has gone into depths talking about family. We, we, want, <laughs> we want families to flourish. We want families to grow um, and, and in the word of God, because once you start breaking those generational curses, then you'll start seeing generational change. Uh, in your family. So family is very important. Uh, love. love. God is love. So love has to be a part of our walk. We must love each other. We must show love. We must um, embrace love. And, and that starts in right here. You know what I'm saying? Love yourself. Love yourself enough to love others. You understand what I'm saying? We can do it. But it's, 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 it's utterly important that we love. Um, there's no getting around that. I, I miss our elder, our, our elder um, who's out right now, uh, Elder Holman. Um, if, if you all have ever had the opportunity to listen to him preach, he stresses, love your enemy. Come on now. <laughs> Y'all know how hard that is, but it's the word of God. And he makes it known, look, love your enemy. I know sometimes he'd be up speaking, and I'd be sitting in them pews, <laughs> and I'd be like, uh, who? Love who? Hey, that's what he said. That's what the word of God says. So love is utterly important. And growth, growth. We want to grow spiritually uh, first because I believe if we grow spiritually, everything else that we desire, everything else that we want will fall in place. So we want to grow spiritually first. Once we start doing that, your finances will increase. Once your giving increases, your finances will increase. So we want to um, grow spiritually and then that will be a trickle-down effect, all right, with our, 
our way of life, with our quality of life. I'm telling you, I'm living witness. So uh, family love growth. And like I said, we invite you all to come worship with us uh, and, and just be a part of this ministry. Hey, if you are on your devices and you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Hit, hit that notification bell. That way, once our videos, our, our, the live streams are uploaded or started, you will get the notification right away. And, and go ahead and comment in that comment section. Tell us where you're from. Uh, any prayer requests you might have, go ahead, put it in there. Uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, and we appreciate you, all right? We appreciate you. So I don't want to hold off any longer. Um, thank you so much for your patience this morning. Uh, we want to keep our, our thoughts and prayers with all of our uh, members who are traveling on the highways and byways. We wish you all uh, safety. Uh, we miss you. We miss you. And we can't wait to see you all. Uh, to my own wife, she's out of town as well. Uh, I miss her, and I'm looking forward to seeing her in the next couple of days. So we want to lift up and, and, and pray for the saints uh, going back and forth and, um, and wish them to come back, all right? So, look, I'm not going to hold us any longer. Thank you again. God bless you. And right now I'm going to hand it over to our praise and worship leader uh, to start this service. Amen. God bless you, and have a wonderful Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's stand on our feet as we offer a prayer unto the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today with thanksgiving. We thank you for another day that you have kept us, oh God. We thank you for your gratefulness. We thank you for our faithfulness. Yes, Lord, and your faithfulness to us. Lord, but that you will have your way in the service, oh God. Lord, be glorified. Be glorified, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for goodness and mercy, oh God. We thank you for allowing us, oh God, to come back here one more time. Lord, we're asking that you will strengthen us in the power of your might. That you will help those that are on the highway, oh God. Those that are on vacation today, oh God. That you will bless them, oh God, to return home safely. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for your son, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. We praise you for it, oh God. The Almighty God. We thank you, God, for where we stand right now. Standing on holy ground, lifting up holy hands. Hey, 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 glory. We love you, Lord. And we bless your name, oh God. And we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart say amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Put a smile on your face. Put a smile on your face. Tell somebody you love them next to you. We're going to praise the Lord, right? You ready to praise the Lord this morning? Well, come on. We're going to sing this song together, all right? Put your hands together with me.
because he's great and he's good to you. Come on. Amen, amen. Good afternoon. My name is Missionary Ruth Blocker, and we would like to welcome you to our online services here at God's Whole Nation Pentecostal Church. We encourage you, we welcome you to lift up the name of Jesus because he says in his word, if he be lifted up, that he will draw all men unto him. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. With me. you out to the one that saved your soul we bless him today now i need y'all to just put your hands together right here victory is mine victory is mine victory today Yeah. 
because he's good and he's great. Hallelujah. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Good afternoon. These are the announcements of God's All Nations Church. Our Zoom meetings with Pastor Terry are back up and running. Kingsmen, every first and third Friday. Women Impacting Now, second and fourth Fridays, 7 p.m. Look, don't meet us there, beat us there. Pastor Terry is giving us very simple biblical teachings that we can apply to our life. We talked about everything from self-development to exposure. You should join us. You should be a part of this discussion. Uh, give your input, taking notes. Just, just we are trying to embedder our lives. So we ask that you join, be a part of the Zoom meetings, and, and we look forward to seeing you. It's graduation time. We want to celebrate the graduates of 2021. They have dealt with some unimaginable things this year. Uh, homeschooling, uh, just being away from their friends. And still, these scholars excel. So we want to do our part and bless them on their next endeavor. All right, so look, make sure you keep your eyes open and keep your ears open we will be having our graduation service soon. And look, don't forget those checkbooks. Look, we want to bless them financially, all right? Now, if there are any graduates who have not yet spoken to our evangelist cockers, please do so as soon as possible. Do you have a testimony? If so, we would love to hear about it. There's no testimony too small, too insignificant, it doesn't matter. We want to know how the Lord has blessed you. He has been uh, taking care of us through this pandemic, through the changes in our, 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 what we thought was normal, but I'm sure that God has done some miraculous things in your life. Look, the Lord has done so much for us. We need to get it out to the world. There is an agenda that think that there is no blessings going on, that it's just total turmoil. We want to turn that upside down. We want to show the glory of the Lord. So look, don't be afraid, don't be hesitant. Send that short testimony video to this email listed below. We'll get it edited, we'll get it up and out, and it will be amazing. Look, send that video, don't worry. We will make you look great, but I'm telling you, we want to get the message out. God is still in the blessing business. It's gonna be a party, y'all. Look, we will be celebrating our pastor's 14th pastoral anniversary. That's right, 14 years of leading this flock. It will happen second Sunday in August. Mark your calendars. Make sure you're here, whether it be online, whether it be here in the building, we will be celebrating this man of God, a humble giant, a man who loves God's people, loves his church, and it spends numerous hours preparing to teach and lead this flock. We want to bless him that day. So come on, come on, join us here. Second Sunday in August, let's pack this house out. Let's show our appreciation. And we want to bless the man of God. Don't leave those checkbooks at home. Bring those checkbooks. You got Zell, we can work with that as well. Come on now. But seriously, we want to bless the man of God, so let's pray for him. Let's pray for him, and let's pray for this ministry as we go forward. These conclude the announcements of God's All Nations Church. I hand it back over to the pulpit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this time. And this is the time that we give unto the Lord. We thank God for our online giver. Those that have been given to this ministry have been a blessing. God want me to let you know your giving is important. Your offering is important. And we appreciate your giving to this ministry for you sowing on good ground. The Bible said Luke, the sixth chapter in the 38th verse, 
He said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Pretch down, shaking together, and running over. And man, we should give into your bosom. And every measure you meet will meet you with all. As you give, as God presses upon your heart to give, give. And God will bless you. He will multiply. Just give him what you have. He told Moses at the Red Sea, he said, what's in your hand? He said, stretch it out. Wherever you give it to God, God will stretch it out for you. He will meet your needs. So be a blessing to this ministry, and God will bless you. Pray my strength to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Just a little something on my heart. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We just thank God for you, you, and you. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, 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 well. Thank you, Lord. I believe I'm going somewhere. I'm going to take a trip. On that good old gospel ship, and we'll go sailing through the air. I'm gonna take a trip on that good old gospel ship, and we'll go sailing. As we go sailing through the air, and when my ship comes. 
the sand as we go sailing through the air. Hey! Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Talk about trouble. I have to cry sometimes. And to those that are out of town visiting, he took a little break, going to see his mother and family and some that weren't with him. And sometimes when the pastor's not in, some folks just don't show up. But you're here. We're here. Hallelujah. Oh, I know how it goes. Sometimes when, when you're in school, if you know the next day you're going to have a substitute teacher, then they don't show up for class. Praise God. But we moving on anyway. Thank God. Thank God for the praise team. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for Sister Raven, Terry. Now, the reason I said that is because of this. When I used to watch wrestling, there was one wrestler called the One Man Gang. He was a gang all by himself. When he entered the room, when he came into the arena and walked up to the stage, they said, here comes the gang. And he was the only one coming in. They called him the gang because he fought two and three people sometime at one time. He was the one-man gang. So I thank God for our praise team, the one-man gang today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You know, our pastor had been teaching on, on series, and the background on it is the Word of God and, and knowing what the Word of God says, and, and that's important. And we're going to continue along that vein, but kind of want to lead in the area today of music, because music is a stronghold in the church. Music is a stronghold on your life. You know, uh, I love music, and I don't believe nobody loves music no more than I do. Now, somebody might. I just say I don't believe it. But, you know, before we go into that area, we want to talk about being sidetracked and devil talk because what's happening now a lot of that is going on, and God is protecting his people. And if we just stay in the word of God, we'll know what God has for us and for us to do. See, some things happen for a reason. This pandemic was for a reason. And you can see by the behavior of some people, it exposes some people. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to look deep, and I want you to think just a little bit. Because, see, sometimes you're looking at something, and you don't know what you're looking at. You're looking right at it. A lot of you, you you've seen people uh, burning up their money. I mean, setting it on fire, and you didn't even know it. You were looking right at them. 
I know some folks scratch. I know I would have remembered that. Some people that did it just for the thrill of doing it. But when did I see that? Well, in the last month or so, how many of y'all live in a neighborhood where they set off fireworks? And y'all heard them at, at one particular time all day and all night. They was burning their money up. Because, see, it serves no purpose other than to satisfy us with a big boom or a bang or whatever it does. So whatever the cost of it is, you might as well did that to your money. Because you just went out there and just lit it up, set it on fire. Now, I'm not knocking people that like fireworks. Uh, some people do it for various reasons. But what I'm saying, don't waste your money. If you really love fireworks, just record it. Then whenever you want to hear a big bang or see the spark, look at your device and keep your money in your pocket. Now, some folks will look at me and say, that sounds crazy. Now, what sounds crazy is you setting your money on fire. But see, that has become the norm to us. And so that's why I say sometimes you're looking at something and you don't know what you're looking at. I praise God today, and I thank him, because the Lord is good to me, and he's good to us. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If I didn't tell some of you, you probably wouldn't even know it. But I, 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 I thank God. Wednesday, I had surgery. I had knee surgery. Wednesday. And I... You know, when I tell you, a lot of folks, you know, when, they, when you tell folks stuff, they really don't believe. They say, well, it probably wasn't that bad because he's here. And when I say Wednesday, I'm talking about four days ago. I got proof. Deacon Blocker back there, he took me to the hospital. And hours later, he picked me up and took me home. They had me all wrapped up, gave me crutches. And when I was sitting in the hospital uh, waiting, you know, they gave me all of that, and I wasn't feeling no pain. Sometimes we think it's us. You know, it's sort of like when you do something, then you realize it wasn't you, it was the Spirit of the Lord. You know, because we can take credit for a lot of things. But when he picked me up and, and, and took me home, they gave me a prescription for of pain medications and, and aspirin so I wouldn't have blood clots and a whole lot of stuff. So when he dropped me off, I took my crutches in my hand, and I walked in the house, walked upstairs, wasn't feeling no pain. Early in the morning, dropped my prescription off, got to go get my prescriptions and all of that just in case I get some pain, you know. And I mean, I'm talking, this wasn't no minor surgery. I had a torn meniscus, and he said, if this don't work, then it's a knee replacement. So I'm feeling all right. About 10 o'clock the next day, 10 or 11 o'clock, I realized what happened. That medication wore off. And see, when I went upstairs, I put my crutches on the other side of the room. And the medication wore off. And I'm sitting there looking at them crutches, and I'm hurting, and I couldn't get to them. And I hopped and hobbled and everything. I'm telling you, this was four days ago. And they told me, you can't uh, uh, immerse yourself or take a shower until Saturday. Now, I like to wash. And... That might not affect folks that ain't into that. But you have to kind of clean yourself up. And, and the wet tiles and sink baths ain't going to do it. Oh, but when Saturday morning came, you know, I was hurting so bad, I laid down, I started praying, Lord, help me. 
And after I prayed, I got up. I wasn't feeling so bad. Then Saturday morning, I unwrapped all that bloody gauze and all that stuff and jumped on in that shower. Y'all see me, right? I had surgery, knee surgery, four days ago. Now, I ain't going to let the devil fool me and say, cut a step. Why don't you dance? Yeah, right. So you can stick your foot out and trip me. I'm like this. Don't go to the doctor if you ain't going to do what he say. But I don't mean every, I'm, I mean, as long as it's in line, it's not a, out of the line of God's word. See, because I'm not into telling folks to live up to somebody else's faith. See, because some people, and sad to say, have let their children die because they was trying to make them live up to their faith. I'm not going to take them to a doctor. I'm going to pray. That's your faith. If the Lord can do anything, if he's going to heal them, he can do that. But a lot of times we try to make people live up to our faith, live up to our ideologies and idiosyncrasies and a lot of things. And we get sidetracked from the Lord. Then... The devil come at you with a lot of devil talk. See, all you have to do, listen to me, is change the name of something just to get you to do it. That's all he got to do. He got to change, just change the name. You thought, you might think I was silly if I told, if I told, I said, I can get you to walk down the street or go out in public in your underwear. Yeah, I, I can do that. I know I can. I can get you to walk. I can get some of the women to walk down the street in their bra and panties. They say, no, nah, you can't do that. I can get some of the men to walk down the street and they, now with some folks, it don't matter. They want to do that. Well, what are you, what are you saying? You got to listen real careful now. To get you to walk out in public in your underwear, Women in particular in your bra and panties, you know all I have to do is tell you what? It's a bikini. That's all I have to do, tell you it's a bikini. And you okay. And you parade, you even take pictures. That's all. All I got to do is change the name. You know, back... In the 60s and 70s when we was on the health kick and, and, and sugar was so bad for us. And they were taking the uh, sugar name out of everything. Because, see, I'm a baby boomer. And we grew up eating cereal. And they was uh, talking about how bad it was, you know, the sugar for us. Because, see, we was eating sugar frosted flakes. We was eating sugar pots and sugar smacks. So they didn't take the sugar out. They just changed the name. Sugar Frosted Flakes, they dropped the sugar. They were just Frosted Flakes. Sugar Pops became Corn Pops. Sugar Smacks was Honey Smacks. Still selling it to you today. Then none changed but the name. See, we must understand the wiles of the devil. He's not going to come up to you and tell you, I'm the devil, and this is what I want you to do. No, he'll walk up to you and say, it's a bikini. Sometimes, see, we have to stay close to God because the devil is always out to get us. He's always out to attack us. Sometimes you don't know you're under attack until you hit the second time. The first time, what is this? You don't even know it. Well, I know every time the devil attacked. No, you don't. No, you don't. There was a time an entire nation did not know when they was under attack. And most of us witnessed it. We sit here. And a lot of us was watching the news or they broke in on television, radio, and a lot of things. Y'all remember 9-11? And when that plane hit that first tower, what a tragic accident. 
What's, oh my goodness. This is terrible. How could this have happened? We were dumbfounded. We were saddened. Began to pray. Did a lot of things. But then the second plane hit the second tower. Y'all were watching the news. They say, wait. They say something else is going on here. Something else is wrong. See, they didn't, we didn't know we was under attack until the second plane hit. That's how the devil operates. And when they knew something was wrong, then they went to the president of the United States. I'm going somewhere with this. Pay attention. <laughs> and he was talking to a bunch of school kids, little toddlers. And one of his advisors came and whispered in his ear. And they talked to him. And he had an expression on his face. And he continued to sit there. He sit there for, I believe, about seven and a half more minutes before he got up and left the room. You know some people criticize that. But what would you have thought when his advisor whispered in his ear, he jumped up and ran out the room? But things began to happen because they knew that we were under attack. Well, what began to happen? They say, scramble the jets. Everybody in the air, come down. I don't care where you are. Whatever airport you're close to, land now. We're giving you a certain amount of time. If anybody else up in the air, we're shooting them down. Now, what are you saying? What I'm telling you is, when there's a crisis, we're under attack. They know how to move. They know how to move swiftly. They know how to get you all the information. They know how to do all of that. Because when the first plane hit, a lot of folks were sidetracked. They really didn't know. They didn't uh, understand what was going on. And as a nation, we began to change. And we're changing now. You know, our objective here is that souls would be saved. That's our whole objective. Our vision, family, love, growth, but our objective is that souls be saved. And see, the pandemic happened for a reason. The elections that we had, the way they went, happened for a reason. It was to get our focus off of things and on to the Lord. When we look at God's All Nations, this assembly, and I think one thing that hinders, and I'm talking about us right here now, is our music and our worship. Because, see, we worship God, and we love music. And I won't name the places, but we have some musicians that were raised up here that are either ministers of music or directors at other places. So... I know they know how to play. They know how to direct. They know how to do a lot of things. And so a lot of times we depend on that. We won't do all we can do. And so slowly they'll move this one, this one will go, that one will go. And because our focus should be on the Lord. See, some folks ain't going to praise the Lord unless you praise them. It's sad. We have made changes. I, I look at the, this, this uh, rostrum area, this pulpit area. It don't look like it looked maybe a couple of years ago. We're not the only assembly 
Other churches, you've probably seen them change and all of that. Basically, all we did was uh, move furniture, change furniture. Now, I'm going to say this. If this don't fit your foot, don't sit there and struggle and try and put this shoe on. But that's all basically happened. And with that, if you get sidetracked or let the devil, devil talk you, something's changed because the furniture is gone. Well, maybe the furniture had to get out of the way so you can really praise the Lord. You say, well, how, 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 is that, how does that work? It works this way because some think something is wrong because the furniture is gone. The pastor, he ain't tell me to say this, he did not change teaching, preaching, living holy. He just changed, moved, or removed some of the furniture. Now, let me say this. See, if we can't look past that, something's wrong. Now, let me explain this to you. Because some folks, see, we're actually here to worship the Lord. Now, some people have a different thought process on that. But I'm not, it could be furniture, it could be rugs on the floor, pictures on the wall. You know, some churches got parking lots where if your car dented up or rusted or leaked oil, you can't park it on the lot. See, actually, we are here to worship the Lord. Now, I want you to think carefully about what I'm about to say. And let it just marinate and just really think about it. See, a lot of times, folks shut you down because they listen not to understand, but listen to respond. Now, I want you to listen to this real good. When your standards of calling something wrong is based on anything other than the clearly defined word of God, you are being judgmental. I'll say this again. When your standard of calling something wrong is based on anything other than the clearly defined word of God, you're being judgmental. See, we're supposed to be giving folks the truth. Did you know a lot of folks don't even come, you know, when you invite some folks to church, some of y'all have heard this before, I ain't got nothing to wear. What's wrong with what you got on? But see, some of them thought they had to appear a certain way to show up, and it's some of our fault. We hear about the truth. Now, some folks, you know, the devil, he's subtle. He's trying to be clever. And all. What is truth? And we, some folks scratch their head and try and figure it out. Let me explain to you what truth is. This is truth. Truth is what God's word says about anything. See, we ain't got to dig up a whole lot of things. That's simply what truth is. Truth is what God's word says about anything. That's truth. Now, some folks can twist it, do whatever they want to say. But that's true. You see, this nation is divided. And a lot of the people that say they're the people of God are divided. Denominations are divided. Uh, assemblies are divided. I'm going to read something to you then you'll understand why some people or the devil have some people in this nation thinking the way that they think. Some of y'all probably saw a movie a few years back 
It was called a time to kill. It was with uh, Samuel L. Jackson. It was about a uh, guy in the, in, the, in the racial South whose daughter, little bitty girl, I think she was nine or ten, that she was grabbed by two white men and raped and just messed up and beat, did everything to her. And when they found the two men, they was taking them uh, in the courthouse. Uh, her father came in, and he, he shot both of them and killed them. And he accidentally shot one of the, the deputies, and his leg had to be amputated. And a lot of the people thought that he should not be charged with a crime. And what for what they did to his daughter, and a lot of people, see, some of y'all remember real life what happened to Emmett Till. And when his mother said, we're going to have an open casket, I want them to see what they did to my son. This thing is real. A lot of times we walk through life and act like this is just a story. But when they went to court in this particular uh, scene, Near the end, you know, your, your attorney give closing remarks. And this was powerful. And I'm going to read some of it. I'm going to let you know ahead of time. I edited some of it because some of us can't ha handle powerful words. But you'll understand the gist of it. And if some of you saw it, you'll remember it. And if some of you want to know what it is, you can because, you know, we can go online and do a lot of things. Just go online and type in, Closing arguments from a time to kill. And so when his attorney was trying to get him off, he had to address the jury in the closing arguments. And he came up and he said, this is a story about a little black girl walking home from the grocery store one sunny afternoon. I want you to picture this little girl. And he said, picture, can't you see her? Suddenly, a truck races up. Two men jump out and grab her. They drag her into a nearby field, and they tie her up, and they rip her clothes from her body. And when they're done, they decide to use her for target practice. So they started throwing full beer cans at her. They throw, throw them so hard that it tear the flesh all the way down to her bone. Can, can you see? Do you, can, you, can, can you get this in your mind? Now comes the hanging. They have a rope. They tie a noose. Imagine a noose pulling tight around her neck at a sudden blinding jerk. She's pulled into the air and her feet and legs go kicking and they don't find the ground. The hanging branch isn't strong enough it snaps and she falls back to the earth. So they pick her up, throw her in the back of the truck, and drive out the Foggy Creek Bridge and pitch her over the edge. And she drops some 30 feet down to the creek bottom. Can you see her? Can you see her? Her raped, beaten, broken body, soaked in her blood, left to die. Can you see her? Can you see her? I want you to pitch that little girl. Now imagine she's white. The whole, he said, the defense rests your honor. The whole purpose was, was of that was to get them to understand that their thought process would have been a little differently if she was white. I'm not preaching racism prejudice or anything like that. But I said it for a reason. See, because five people died January 6, 2021, including a U.S. Capitol Police officer when a mob of violently invaded the U.S. Capitol in protest of the November 2020 election. You know they're still talking about this election. Now, I want you 
to imagine, if you will. Because some of y'all saw it on TV, and sometimes they still show it. As you see them breaking down the fences, and they're attacking the police, and they're climbing up the Capitol steps and on the building and on the wall, and they're taking things and breaking out the window, and they're rushing into the Capitol, and they're trashing the place and breaking into the uh, uh, Speaker of the House chambers, and the, the president, vice president, has to be escorted in secrecy because they're looking for him. And you imagine all those people that were crawling all over that building. Can you see it? I'm like, can you see it? Now imagine they was black. Well, what's your point? A lot of folks wanted to know, well, why didn't the president respond? Imagine they was black. See, we know they can respond, because y'all remember 9-11. They got on the air real quick. They say, scramble the jets. Everybody get down. I don't care where you are, if you're flying in from another nation, the closest airport, set it down. And they had to get down. So my point is what? If these folks had been black, they wouldn't have to call the president. They wouldn't have to wonder where the National Guard was. I'm glad there wasn't, because a lot of them probably would have came in shooting. Well, what's your point in all of this? Because one thing is, we're still talking about an election that some thought was stolen. But now I'm going to get into the narrative and tell you the mentality of this nation and those that say they believe in God and those that are, are, are godless. You know where that stems from? One of the greatest wars we had, you know what it was called? It was called the Civil War. You know what the Civil War was about? It was about slavery. Our president lost the race, but he refused to accept it. The Confederacy, the Southerners, they lost the war. And they refused to accept it, and folks have been suffering ever since. We are the only nation that I can think of on the planet that honor losers of war. That's why we have the problem. See, because when the Confederacy lost, and a lot of them refused to except the loss, they put up statues of the Confederate generals. These folks lost. General-in-Chief Robert E. Lee, uh, Stonewall Jackson, these folks were losers. And we just now removing their statue. These folks were still flying the Confederate flag. You lost. I'm, I'm giving you some truth because they don't believe they lost. They won't accept the loss. Some of the greatest military, military forts and institutions in this country is named after losers. Some of y'all, y'all probably don't know when y'all hear like something happened at a military installation like Fort Bragg. Fort Bragg. Braxton Bragg was a general in the Confederate Army. Why they still got a fort named after him that's training soldiers? Fort Hood, that's named after a Confederate soldier. Then you wonder why we're in the state that we're in. Well, they say it's a part of history. They put all that stuff in a, in a Confederate museum. You don't have to put it all over the South. Listen. See, we've been sidetracked. 
and devil talk for so long. And we have to understand that our sole purpose, you know, the, our sole purpose for being here is to worship God. Lift up the name of Jesus. When, when we have the, you know, a lot of church don't even have choirs anymore. You know why? Because the choirs begin to fashion themselves like the world. See, in the 70s and the 80s, they used to have on the radio and sometime on TV the battle of the bands. Or they have the doo-wop groups, the, the temptations against the four tops. Uh, you know, different things like that. And then it came to where they started having the, the, the battle of the choirs. What you battling about? We supposed to be lifting up Jesus. But they wanted to see who could sing the best, who could make the most move, who had to fly robes. They wanted, see, we're here to lift up Jesus, not us. They want to be honored for what they do. Do you know how many, first of all, do you know what gospel is? Gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. And so when somebody say gospel music, you should be singing about good news. Good news, you ain't singing about your girlfriend. And, and see, the devil, he'll be slick. Oh, God, he gave me her, and la, 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 la. See, that ain't about Jesus. That's about you. They got the Grammy Awards, where they have a gospel session. They couldn't have it if these folks didn't show up. They got the Covenant Awards. These are all what they call Gospel Music Awards. We Love Christian Music Awards, Texas Gospel Music Excellent Award, BMI Christian Awards, Stella Awards, Rhythm of Gospel Awards, Newsom Kingdom Gospel Music Awards Show, Voice of Gospel Music Awards, Crazy Factor People's Choice Awards, Tampa Bay Gospel Awards, GMA Dove Awards, Spin Awards. They create an award for everybody. And all these folks show up. Ooh, and I thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> then you got kings of the gospel and queens of the gospel. The father, the mother, and all of this. How about we just praising the Lord gospel? See, it's important that we don't get sidetracked and devil talk. See, because one thing, there are biblical principles of music. Just because you can play an instrument and every once in a while you mention the name Jesus don't mean you're doing gospel. The Bible itself, this is what it says about music. It is a study of every major passage that deals with music with application of the New Testament church and modern times. Churches need to train the people in music so well that they can test it by biblical standards. See, your, your gospel music should be able to stand up with the Bible. They must be able to discern such things as soft rock, honky tonk, dance rhythm, chords, as used in Christian church music and worldly vocal styles. You need to know the difference in that. It is not enough to publish a list of unacceptable music such lists are helpful, but any list will be obsolete in a short time. Further, no list is exhaustive. Then they got principles. Let me explain something to you. Church music must be sound in doctrine. Colossians 3.16 It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. 
in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. That's what we're here for. That's what the, the, the gospel music is, is for. And we're to encourage people through singing about Jesus Christ. See, it's important. Church music must emphasize melody. That's important. Ephesians 5 and 19, it reads, Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Your girlfriend ain't got nowhere to be in that. Your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, we sing in melody in our heart to the Lord. See, because if you're not careful... The devil will trick you. Church music must not borrow from and build bridges to the world of contemporary Christian music. See, because now when you listen to the radio or whatever you listen to, your device that you listen to, they got contemporary uh, Christian rock, Christian hip hop. That sounds crazy. Romans 16, verses 17 and 18 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Get away from them folks. Singing all of those strange stuff. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. I'm going to do this and I'm going to turn the Stellas out. I'm going to go home with two and three Dove Awards. We're going to have a good time down in Sin City. And by good words and fast speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. See, the devil make merchandise of you. If you're not reading his word, he'll use you. Honey, you got a wonderful voice. I'm going to make you a star. And that's what some folks want. They want to be stars. But you have to be careful. You have to be careful. First Peter 5 and 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, he identified him as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now, that's why I was talking about, see, music is so important. See, anybody can cut a, a, a record, you know, a, a what they say, next week my tape, my disc going to drop. See, we didn't got so common, we, we want to identify with the world. See, I'm a baby boomer. When they told you we're going to pick you up in a minute, they meant in 60 seconds. I'll be out in a minute. They meant 60 seconds. Now, to identify with the world, they say, oh, I'm going to be a minute. That means you're going to be a while. See, now they used to say, you know, uh, the Lord blessed me. I was able to uh, 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 record a record to bless the Lord. But now my, my disc going to drop this Friday. And see, if you singing gospel, what are you singing? Good news. You should be singing what's in the word of God. Now, I'm not knocking this. I know sometimes... People take uh, uh, creative licenses and, you know, because when you're writing, you try and make things rhyme and all of this. And I've said this before. Uh, the late Rance Allen, he had one of his biggest uh, 
uh, Psalms was miracle worker. And they said it was gospel. They say, hey, I want to tell you about a miracle performed by Jesus on a powerful hand. He went to a wedding one night. They say the party was out of sight. Somebody said, I have something to drink. Jesus said, wait a minute, let me think. First of all, that's a slanderous. Jesus said, wait a minute, let me think. Do you know who you, what you're saying or what you're talking about? Jesus said, let me figure this out. I want you to understand what was said in the song that they called, let me figure this out. He said, wait a minute, let me think. He said, get me a pitcher, fill it up with some water. I'll wave my hand across it, and we'll have wine to drink. That's when he blew their minds time after time. Started off when he turned the water into wine. And it was, I mean, that was a big hit and, and all of that. That's not the word of God. But some folks don't care. The word of God, help me, Lord. In John chapter 2, verses 2 through 8, I'm going to read this. It says, and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they had no wine. It wasn't somebody said they had to have something to drink. It said the mother of Jesus said unto him, they had no wine. Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. So that probably wouldn't have fit well in the song. His mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. And Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He didn't say, I wave my hand across it and we'll have wine to drink. But it sounds good. That sounds good. I mean, it rhymed and everything. It's not gospel. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it. See, what I'm, I, I, I want us to understand this is very important. See, because we'll call something or change the name of something and get a lot of people to do it. Church music must be skillful. Church music must be unquestionably right and safe. Church music must aim for that which is excellent. God's people should aim to learn to sing and play music. Now, we're here to worship God. And some of us that raised children, a lot of our children are raised up here around a lot of instruments and can't play a one. Man was created with the ability to sing. And the chief purpose was for this was the worship of God. That's why, that's why he gave us that ability. Man, man sings because he is made in God's image. God gave man the equipment for singing, physical, intellectual, emotional. He gave us the equipment, consider the physical. The four main parts of the voice production are as follows. Power source, which is the air exhaled from the lung. The vibrator, which is the larynx, that's the voice box that sits on top of the windpipe, the trachea. And it's an incredible complex organ consisting of two folds known also as vocal cords. He gave us all this. And it's to make music, to sing melody unto the Lord. If you ever read about the design of Lucifer, it, speak, it tells you some of this. 
That's why we must know the word of God. It's very important. Because, see, when we don't, what happens is we'll listen to people and folks will change things and, and all of that. I know a lot of us familiar uh, with one familiar scripture, you know, when the, when the serpent beguiled uh, Eve in the garden, and a lot of times they show you him, him slithering up there and he talked to Eve. Y'all seen some version of that, am I correct? Did not happen. Did not happen. Let me tell you how he got there. He walked up to her. He walked to her. And he talked to her. Now, I, I, all I know is what the Bible say. I don't know if all the beasts could talk. I know the Bible say he talked. Maybe after he did what he did, maybe the Lord told the beast, don't say nothing else because of what happened. Because after that, the only other beast I know talked in the Bible was the donkey that Balaam was riding on. So I don't know. Maybe we ain't around. They probably talk. Now, don't go say I said the, the animals talk. I know this one did. The Bible said that he was more subtle than any beast of the field. You know what subtle is? That he was, he was cunning, he was conniving, he was crafty. So he walked up to her. And um, I'll just read in the book of Genesis. I'm just going to read a couple of verses. Uh, Genesis 3 and 1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, that means he talked. I didn't write this. He said, he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And when we skip down to uh, verse 14, 3 and 14, it says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. That lets you know he was a beast. And above every beast of the field, Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So he didn't slither up there and talk to her. He walked up there. And folks be trying to talk about evolution and, and how uh, animals change. No, these, uh, what God created is still here. Ain't nobody evolved. If anything evolved, it's because God changed it. The only one I know that God changed, animal changed, was that serpent. He knocked his legs out from under him, or however he did it, he crawls on his belly. They know everything. Don't go through that evolving stuff. He turned from this into that. The only thing that turned from one to another is what God created to turn, like a caterpillar to a butterfly. We have to understand these things. See, because we'll take one scripture and take it out of context. You know, because people will say, uh, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Took the scripture off because, you know, these things were before. Now, that ain't what that means. What that means is just what it says. There's nothing new under the sun. Anything that man came up with it was, he had to use what God already had here. He didn't have nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. Anything. And don't get twisted letting you think that uh, the devil fooling some people, but more people believe in God than you think, but they just ain't living it. Because, see, they'll, they'll accept God's truth, and they can't do nothing about it. One of the biggest things right now for solving crimes is what? DNA. And they say because nobody in the, on the entire planet has the same DNA. You might have some traits because you're family members and all that, but you don't match with nobody else. Don't they tell you they believe what God says? He created each and every one of us differently. And they'll take that to a court of law. 
they lock people up for that. It's important. And so it's care, we have to be careful about the music that we listen to, the music that we play. See, it, it, it's important that what we do is be concerned about worshiping God. Because, see, the devil will have us like some of these Pharisees sitting up strung out on ceremonial law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Did you know it was two laws? There's a testimonial law, that's a moral law, and there's a ceremonial law, that's a, a law that you do stuff. But, here's a way for you to tell the difference. Y'all do know that the testimony was put into the Ark of the Covenant, along with a few other things. But here's the way you tell the difference. See, with the ceremonial law, people had to do certain things to be forgiven for their sin. And they knew what it was, those that had the law. If, if uh, uh, somebody lied or, or stole or whatever, they had to go to the, uh, the temple, to the altar, and give uh, uh, three bullocks or uh, two turtle doves or, or whatever it was. So their sins would be forgiven now. Here's how you know the difference. If you, I, I'll ask a rhetorical question and you can answer it in your mind. Before Jesus, before Jesus came on the scene, was it wrong to practice the ceremonial law? Was it wrong to uh, 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 sacrifice uh, uh, these animals for our sins? Before Jesus came. No, it was not wrong. But on the same vein, after Jesus uh, uh, came and, 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 and gave his life for us and, and died and was buried and rose again, was it wrong to offer these sacrifices after Jesus came? Yes, it was wrong. Now, the testimonial law. And we know what the testimonial law says. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, and, and so on and so forth. The testimonial law, before Jesus came, was it wrong to steal? Yes. And after Jesus gave his life and bled and died and rose, was it wrong to steal? Yes. So that lets you know the testimonial law is in effect, not the ceremonial law. That's what he came to fulfill. And we must know the difference. I'm winding it up. Somebody said, thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, what we have to be careful of, a lot of times, we as people of God, I know some things we just can't do. But let's not be fearful of this modern technology. We need to know how to use all this stuff as well as everybody else because if we don't, they use it on us. Trick us and do all type of things. Did you know, I've heard some preachers and some people say, like, if you look at this, it looks like a Bible. I got this cover on purpose. It's, it's my uh, iPad. And my Bible is in here. And some say, oh, they, ain't, they ain't right. You, you're supposed to have the book, the leather bound, the, the paper bound, the Bible. And I do. In here, I have the Bible. And I got close to a hundred other Bibles in here. And the re one reason why, when somebody reading from a different version, I could click over and see what they're saying and know what they're saying. Then I have commentary and a lot of other things concerning the Word of God. But just because you don't do that 
or can't do that or don't understand that. Don't try and make me live up to your faith or say this thing is wrong because God did these things for a reason. He said the things I do, you can do in greater. Now I want you to understand this. He didn't say better. He said greater. Because when he fed the 5,000 beside the women and children, right now we have the capacity to feed millions of people at one time. That's greater, not better. When I can carry a uh, uh, hundred Bibles without carrying a load, that's greater. See, and again, I'm going to read this. When your standards are calling something wrong is based on anything other than the clearly defined word of God, you are being judgmental. Give you case in point. Most of us have a cell phone. And when they first come out, a lot of people was against cell phone. Now, a lot of you all, you all, I'm saying you all because I don't do it, but a lot of you all sleep with your cell phone. Now, what's your point? Ain't nothing wrong with that. I do a lot of stuff with my cell phone. I pay bills, I shop, and, and all of that. And some people, they're afraid of modern technology. Because on your cell phone, what's a phone's purpose? That you might transmit words or receive words. That's the purpose of the phone. You could have done that. If you don't believe in modern technology, why don't you just keep your rotary phone? <laughs> Because that was the sole purpose, was to receive words and transmit words. So what are you saying? What I'm saying is nothing changed. You're still receiving the word. You're still uh, transmitting word. It's just through a different device. Same word. Same word. So I encourage you. Not, I'm not saying to, because see, you can use anything wrong, this modern technology. I've gone to the store, the big box stores, and I've seen people uh, uh, standing in long lines. And over in the area look like this over there, they have self-checkout. And ain't nobody over there because they don't know how to use it. I walk right on over there, boop, 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 and I'm out. On some stores, I can shop in there on my phone and add up my food right there and pay for it. And all I do when I walk out the door is show on my phone. Ain't waiting in no lines or nothing. So what I'm saying is this. Let us rightly divide this word. Let us live for Jesus and not for man. When I said about the music, that's important. It's important. But just because I don't like it don't mean it's wrong. It's wrong if the word of God says it's wrong. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm ending this, but I just wanted us to get some truth. And what did I say truth was? I said truth is what God says, what God's word says about anything. So we just thank God for the word of God today. Thanking God again for our past and his absence. And just kind of want to touch on that uh, uh, before I end it. That's coming up, and I know we had it on the announcement, but just want to expound on it just a little bit. Coming up in the second uh, Sunday in August, we're going to be celebrating Pastor Terry uh, 14th pastoral anniversary, Pastor Terry, along with his wife, Minister uh, Wanza Terry. And what we want to do is this. I believe the pastor gives 100%, and this is his 14th anniversary. So we're asking the people, if you can, each adult, to bless the pastor with $114. If we can do that. He gives 100%. This is his 14th year. And to the children, we're asking the children, uh, uh, 
if you can come up with $14, each child tugging your mama's skirt and, and sleeve, and mama, we want to be a blessing to our pastor, and tell the other little kids and, and all that, because we want to be a blessing to our pastor, amen? We just thank God. I said that uh, God said, Jesus said that the things I do, you can do greater. Right now, at God saw nations, whether you can see it or not, we're probably meet, reaching more people than we have previously because of the modern technology. And we thank God for that. Amen. So uh, God bless you. And we just want to end on a word of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for this time before you. We thank you for uh, the worship today, Lord. We thank you for those that watch us via their uh, electronic devices, Lord. We ask you to touch those and bless those, Lord, that uh, 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 watch us. Bless those that are going through, Lord. Uh, how uh, the devastation in this land uh, seems like we're going through a war zone and it affected some of our families and uh, some of them have been hurt some of them have been killed some of them are going through a sickness Lord but touch those Lord hallelujah that's able to receive you Lord and encourage them Lord oh God and help us Lord that we will get more into your word Lord understand what your word is saying that we will rightly divide your word Lord hallelujah we thank you right now Lord and as we go further, uh, Lord, let everything be done toward the lifting up of Jesus. And we actually look on our pastor and those that went along with him, Lord. Let them continue to enjoy the fellowship of their loved ones and, and protect them on their way back, Lord. And we thank you for it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people say amen.